So hi, my friends. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> um, okay, we're not go now going to be talking about an incredible people, yeah, um, that uh, that come on the scene um, around the turn of the millennia, uh, around twelve hundred BCE, right? Right when the Iron Age begins, right? Um, and of course, 1200 BCE, we talked about this, right? You know about this already, yeah? Um, there is the, there are the Anatolians, the, the Hittites, right? And there are the Egyptian, New Kingdom Egypt, right? Imperial Egypt and Imperial Hittites and Imperial Assyrians and, you know, all the stories that I have told you about Mesopotamia and what is happening in Mesopotamia around um, this period, right? Um, and 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 now we're going to come to this incredible people, the Phoenicians, right? With which who were like the like the Minoans, right? They were sea traders, right? Because because their their the region from which they they came, right, was Eastern Mediterranean, right? And and you know, all all the folks right around the Mediterranean Sea, yeah, including all the Africans and in East Medi in the East Mediterranean, in the Levant, right, in and and the southern parts of what we have been forced to call Europe, right. Um, all of this, if you have a if you have a sea next to you, obviously you'll use the sea for uh, for all kinds of purposes. So um, the Egyptians and the Mesopotamians, right? We know the Mesopotamians and the cedar trees, and the Egyptians and their need for again for uh, for wood and um, and. Uh, yeah, the, the the importance of what Eastern Mediterranean had to offer, right? Um, in terms of um, basically, basically, uh, one of the things, one of the most important things, being being uh, being the wood, right? Um, so, like the Minoans who got the influence of 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 all of Mesopotamia and Africa right, were affected by all of this, right, Phoenicians were actually the, 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 also the, the, one of the, became one of the main, uh, sort of, um, main propellers, right, main, um, uh, instruments, they became the people of Phoenicia, one of the main instruments of spreading the culture of Fertile Crescent and Africa, right, um, to Europe, right, so they, uh, they were successful traders, right, of the coastal cities of Eastern Mediterranean, right, um, b basically Sidon, Tyre, and Babylon. We will see them on the on the map, right? They traded with Egypt and the Fertile Crescent. They, of course, like the Im uh, Epic of Gilgamesh, right? Um, they controlled cedar forests, which were highly prized in Mesopotamia and Egypt, both of. Uh, which regions have very little wood because they have very little, um, you know, greens and, and, and whatnot, right? Um, but there was one other thing that the Phoenicians had the, con had the control over and had, you know, the monopoly on, and that was purple dye, right? But now pur purple dye, right, um, made from coastal shellfish, right, uh, which is not not present ev everywhere, you have to have a coastline and you have to have shellfish, right? Um, and uh, they they made this purple dye from uh, from these shellfish, uh, shellfishes. And, and they were, Phoenicians were the only uh, people who had access to this purple dye and who had come, uh, who had completed the, the uh, sort of the chemical, um, context of its development and whatnot, but because they, they it was it was a very um, very unique 
uh, sort of commodity, it was very rare, right? It was very rare. And then this purple dye, therefore, the color purple, purple, yeah? Now, if you see any of your... Uh, any of your, you know, medieval paintings and and um, paintings of ancient Greeks and whatnot, uh, or or the dress code, the dresses of uh, of uh, of royalty, right? Royalty became the color purple. So it was a luxury item which was extremely, which highly highly prized. So now Tripoli, um, Sidon, right? And and Tyre, right? These are the Phoenician and uh, territory, right? And um and and this is the 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 region from which they started, right? Um. So um. Okay. So then, uh, from their beginnings around twelve hundred, right? Um. They they grew. They grew, and I will. We will see which which way they grew, grew right? Uh, so this purple dye was expensive. Um, they dubbed Phoenicians dyed this cloth, cloth, and and sold it in quote unquote Middle East and Western Mediterranean for huge profits, right? And uh, in the ancient world, as I told you, um, nobility and the kings and the queens, right? Their status was shown by wearing purple cloth clothing. It's a nice color too, right, you guys? Anyway, so um, so by 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 around you know, eight hundred BCE, yeah, they started around twelve hundred BCE, and by eight hundred BCE, look at the extent of their territories, my friend. You see the red, uh, the red, um, you see the, um, the, the red uh, sort of lining, right? From, from um, Babylonia, Sidon, and Tyre, right? They go to Crete, right? Where your Minoans were, right? And then they go through or the whole coast of North North Africa, right? And they come to the I you know here to the island of Sicily. They take control. They take over that island. They come to Sar Sardinia, another island. They take control of another island, and and um, you know um, Sicily I, as we will see becomes very very important. And then one of the main main centers that they establish by eight hundred is the city of Carthage. Because of its location, that you know, Carthage could could um, obviously, as you see here, um, bear with me. Yes, my friends. So, um, so as you see, um, Carthage is very, very nicely located, right? Um, here. Right, control over Eastern Mediterranean and Western Mediterranean, and they did not. They did not stop once they reached the Strait of Gibraltar, and we're going to see later on where we got this name. Right, the Strait of G Gibraltar, and then once they reached the Strait of Gibraltar. Right, which is a very very important strait because it connects the Mediterranean Sea, uh, Mediterranean Sea to the Atlantic, right? Atlantic Ocean, which is here, right here, and you know this here <laughs> actually, yeah, and um, and and they did not stop at this. Carthage became an, an imperial by eight hundred. Carthage became an imperial city, yeah, my friends. So we are going into just a specimen of Phoenician um, art, and you see the the influence of um, of Egyptians, right, um, on their on their art. This is a winged human headed sphinx, right, wearing a, the double crown of Egypt, right, um, and apron is hanging down. Right on the chest with the projecting, uh, with the projecting, um, uris meaning uh, cobra, right? Uh, 
again, similar to those worn by Egyptians, Egyptian pharaohs, right? This was a this is like a striking uh, Phoenician style. And and what what where, where 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 is it again? Again, what or how did it did we, did we come across it? Right? It was ex excavated, of course, in the nineteenth century, of course, by Sir Max Mallowan, right? Um, and it was pur purchased from the British School of Archaeology in Iraq, right, in 1961. This is an art piece of the Phoenicians from the 8th century BCE at the height of their um, power, right, my friends? So, um, by 950, actually, before 800, before they, uh, they set up um, Carthage, right, I mean, yeah, they had gone as far as Spain, my friends. They, and it, they even went into the Atlantic Ocean and they went yeah, in, in your, they went down the western coast of Africa uh, up until a certain point. And I will, we will see it in a map, on the map in a, in a second. But what you have to remember, right, is therefore that, that, um, you know, that, it was not the voyages of discovery, right, that went all the way in the west coast of Africa, right? Um, the Phoenicians who already already had gone, right, uh, through um, through a large part of it, as we will see. And by 800, right, they had uh, set up their most important colony, as I said, which becomes a significant power, um, in the Mediterranean, so again, you know, this is this is how the world works, my friends. Right? History is cumulative. Our 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 achievements are cumulative. Right? It is not as if twentieth century man came out of the blues and all of a sudden could make all these discoveries and and whatnot. And look what we're uh, what the what the, what is happening, nevertheless, to the. A population of of Earth with this virus because, um, because uh, because even now, right? If we don't have um, responsible people um, uh, on our quote unquote thrones, and I'm giving you a hint here, right? Um, then um, then all of that could be destroyed, right? All these achievements could be, you know, uh, gradually destroyed, right? But at any rate, um, so the, it was the Phoenicians, right, and that took the, the culture of Western Asia and, and Africa, right, all the way to Spain. And Spain and Italy, of course, are very, very strategic, strategically located, and we'll see why, right? Um, so the the Phoenicians, of course, they themselves they needed Eastern Mediterranean, right? That didn't have certain commodities, right? Certain uh, commodities. So they their early voyages, right, was in search of commodities for themselves, right? Um, for metals, specifically tin, copper, and iron, which they did not have, in order to make tools and we weapons. They needed also silver and gold. Yeah? Remember gold, yeah, was inner Africa. Silver, one of the main places, Anatolia, right? But anyway, and other places uh, around the Mediterranean. Anyway, the, in search of these, right, Phoenicians, went through the Strait of Gibraltar, west into the Atlantic Ocean, and they went as far as the African coast, and we'll see, and read my lips, my friends, you cannot do that again. I, why can't you do that? <laughs> anyway, um, they, uh, uh, they, they, they reached Britain. Lo and behold, they reached Britain. So this is how well, the Phoenician network worked, right? This is um, around 800 BCE. You see that they have, they are controlling what you see where they are controlling, right? And you see that 800 BCE, they, well, you, you, you saw it on the other map, right? They, they went towards, they're going, they've, they've covered Spain, right? They're going towards Britain, and you see 
that there are parts of them are going down. So where yeah, they got they they come and from this is Spain, right? They they take over Spain and they go right as far as Britain, right? Um okay. So um because of their wood, right? Uh, and because of their know-how, because they were sea peoples, right? Um, shipbuilding was one of their uh, one of their um, sort of preoccupations, right? So that the the Assyrians, right, would ask the the Phoenicians to build them um, their ship. This is from a, one of the capitals of the Neo Assyrian Empire, which went from remember from nine hundred to 600 BCE, right? The capital of which was Nineveh, right? Uh, became Nineveh, right? I remember the in the first imperial period, the capital was Ashur, right? And in the second pe uh, imperial period of the Assyrians, the capital became Nineveh, right? So this is a specimen of their arts and the shipbuilding, right? And this is a possible map uh, of uh, uh, one of the um, Carthaginian sort of uh, travelers and and uh, um, men of curiosity, right, my friends? Yeah, uh, Hanno, right, who was a African Carthaginian, right, uh, led a colonizing. Um, uh, an exploration expedition, right, down the western coast of Africa, right, and they reached this already by 5 or 6th century BCE, which is towards, excuse me, towards the end of the route. Yeah, my friends. So then, here we get the Carthaginian Empire, right? Carthaginian Empire, nevertheless, right, uh, remains what you see, right? Now, there, you see something else. This is 200 BCE, right? Yeah, towards, like, really, really the end, you know, after 200 BCE. And the fact that the growth of uh, Phoenicians, right, they started 1200, their growth from 800, right, um, to whatever, now now we are 200 BCE, right? And by the time they, we get to 200 BCE, my friends, we have already, um, already uh, passed the, the Greeks, right? And we're dealing with the Romans. We're going to see all about, about all of this. But one of the major, major, major... And sort of rivals of Rome was Africa and the Phoenician Carthaginian Empire, right? So um, you'll see that here. Excuse me. Let's see whether I can make this big. Yes, you see here that the purple, light blue, and dark blue is the extent of the Carthaginian Empire by 265 BCE. So, uh, purple, light blue, dark blue, I mean dark blue, right? Um, dark blue, right? Um, by 218 BCE, they've conquered Spain, right? No? Uh, in the Second Punic War, right? Um, and uh, and this is Carthage at 200 BCE because what has happened in the in in the Punic Wars between Carthaginians Punic Wars which we will get to between the Carthaginians and the Romans right ultimately the Romans are are able to take over Cartin areas under regions under uh, Carthaginian control right and they they rest wrestle this uh, rest this away yeah from the Africans this empire from the Africans from North Africans and uh, it became 
it becomes Roman territory uh, during the during the imperial period of Rome, which we will get to. But okay, so the, the Phoenicians, you see, already have you know we owe a lot of debt. Yeah, to Phoenicians, right? But one of the most important contributions that they made, right, was their remarkable alphabet. Because they took the Sumerian script, right, and they created a purely phonetic alphabet, right? They created letters, in other words, 22 letters, right? And it was their alphabet that uh, spread uh, rapidly, 22 letters, you know, <laughs> easy to learn, right? Yeah, uh, and and the, the, therefore they did not need long periods of ap apprenticeship, right? And they became, right, literate, right? So this is the, the, the way the Phoenician alphabet looked like, right, um, before this. And, and it is from this alphabet that we ultimately get um, our Latin alphabet, and then from the Latin alf alphabet, we get our own alphabet, right? And here is a Phoenician uh, inscription. As you see, it is very, very um, sort of legible. Of course, we cannot read it, right? It's extremely legible, and it is, uh, it is easy to read. Right, my friends? So this was just a short synopsis, uh, my dear friends, about the Phoenicians and the empire that they made, right? And you see that we have already come to the Iron Age, right? Yeah, after 1200 BCE, right? Iron Age starts, right? Uh, so that excuse me, so that the first millennium, you know, to, we are now in the first millennium, right? And the next time that um, we will be talking about our cultures, we will be dealing with the Mycenaeans, who are also uh, sort of prospering around this time and we will we will see exactly when Mycenaeans, the Persians and the Greeks. Yeah my friends, in other words, we come to the first millennium right before um, before common era, before Christ, right? We are, Christ is supposed to have been born right around the year zero to 5 CE, current era, right, my friends? So um, so it is important for us, right, to, to realize now, yeah, look at the context of the international uh, world of the time, right? Uh, you have to imagine that the, that the Indians, you read about the Indians and the Chinese, please, from your books, my friends, because you see already right and uh, we have uh, quite a bit to go and 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 I cannot cover everything right but but you know or you know from your readings right um that there was the harappa civilization right in in india right but that you know that by um by a certain point is is no longer there and and is uh, if i'm not mistaken it's um um 1500 BCE, they're already out of the picture. Um, I think, I think, not out of the picture, obviously, obviously, don't, don't take me wrong. Um, the, you know, the Indus Valley civilization remains a remarkable civilization, right, um, throughout its history, right, and, and it creates in the early modern um, period, right, one of the biggest empires of, of the international sea. Um, so, um, 
you know, that's not to detract from their from their magnificent achievements. But the Harappan civilization, we don't know their language, so we don't know that much about them. But of course, there is the Chinese, right? And by the time 200 BCE, you get to the, uh, we will talk about the Chinese in the first millennium, right? A little bit. Yeah, my friends. So, um, so I want you to, to pay attention to the fact that this international scene Right now, stretched from in some on some level from you know the the influence of in, this international scene reached as far as Britain, right? But certainly, 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 you know the context of uh, of um, ancient Egyptian kingdoms and and the imperial setups of the second millennium. Uh, BC, right, land-based empires and whatnot, and all of that, right, all of those uh, uh, currents, achievements, processes, right, that I have talked about to you, to you until now, right, they reach the Western Mediterranean. Right uh, through the Minoans, they have already reached to the north of them, which is by the Mycenaeans, and the, the, the north of Mycenaeans are the Greeks. Right, so it reaches um, the Greeks, right, um, and then it reaches the Romans, right, and reaches the Spaniards, right, and you will see that the Romans all um, actually, right. Uh, follow in some sense, right, on some level, the footsteps of the Phoenicians on the one hand, and as we'll see later on, the Persians on the other. So this is our uh, international context, my friends. I want you to pay attention to the fact that um, it were the Africans, right, and the, uh, and the Western Asians, right, that um, and and then later on, as we will see, um, the Persians coming and whatnot, the Assyrians and you know, everything that I've told you before, right? Um, it is all of that, right? That is coming together gradually, right? And we are now, yeah, we um, eight hundred, five hundred BCE, right? And 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 we are getting very close to our current era, right? To, there is 1,000 years before we get to the current era, right? CE. Okay, my friends, so I will stop here. I bid you farewell, and I bid you the best of luck in the exams that are in, in, in your um, quiz for the third uh, module, and um, I will give you um, more time for the third quiz. Okay, my friends, uh, please study well. Please help me help you prosper, my friends. Please study well. I beg of you. And the second thing I beg of you is to vote. Please, please vote as if your life depends on it, my friends. Please vote. I love you all, and I bid you farewell for now.